when you hear about breakups and someone says, you know, it, it's not you, it's me, this is it's not me, it's you. Like, it, it's, it's at some point you have to realize that you fall under the same rules that every other player on the team is, and they've given you concession after concession after concession, and at some point it has to stop. And for you to react that that way, because I'm sure that this wasn't the first warning. I'm sure there was a bunch of verbal warnings of, mm -hmm. hey, if this happens again, you're going to be fine. Hey, if this happens again, you're going to be fine. And the percentage of stuff that we hear about is maybe 10% of the things that actually happen. So we're, we're getting this, this small, tiny little portion of, of the dysfunction that, that's created. And, and at some point, enough is enough. Now, all that being said, when you go into a situation and you're going to take chances on guys that have, have created challenges for other organizations, you cannot be surprised when they create a challenge for your organization. It's like drafting a guy who's slow. Don't be mad at him <laughs> because he's slow. That's what he is. You went into it with eyes wide open. Yeah. It happens all the time. We know he's slow, and then you're mad at him for being slow. Like, oh, what did you expect? That's a great analogy. That's a gr that's, all right, the other part of this that I find noteworthy is what Mike Mayock actually put in this letter. And I printed off a really big version of this so you can go along with, with me on okay, it, Coach. Without my glasses. Which is the final line. You want mine, Coach? He says, you're in, basically, he's violated a, a, un, the penalties available under club's discipline schedule, the CBA, your NFL player contract, including but not limited to additional fines and discipline for engaging in conduct mm -hmm. detrimental to the club. To me, that is setting the, setting the template if you need to after the first year, if it doesn't go well, if he does have more violations, when year two is fully guaranteed, to be able to say, you voided those guarantees with conduct detrimental. Not that this alone will do it, well, but that if there's another incident, if there's another instance that they can say, and I'm sure there'd be a grievance and a fight, essentially, if they want to fire him, it would be with cause, not without cause. No, the, the conduct detrimental clauses are, are, are part of the CBA, and you put in team rules related to conduct detrimental and you share those with the players at, at the start yep. of the season. Everybody needs mm -hmm. to know what the rules are and then once they know what the rules are there's there's a lot of things that can fall under conduct detrimental to the team and, and a lot of that is standard language. Sometimes with fines you, you know that you're going to lose an arbitration or it's going to be cut in half but it's one of those things of hey, you've created such a big headache for us. Yep. We're going to create a big headache for you. And if you want that $54,000 back, you got to show up in the offseason with your representative and your lawyer and go to this arbitration hearing. And a lot of guys, especially when they have a ton of money, <laughs> won't do it. So it's like, you want to annoy us, we're going to annoy you. At some point, let's come to a place where we're both operating with with the same level of, of respect and... Professionalism. And professionalism, not just, not just for the club, but for everybody else who sits in the, that room for every other guy who's trying to get better who's trying to win who cares like just just stop it just stop it enough and when you're part of big organizations you know there's information and I don't know what it is but ever since I came into an NFL locker room it was my understanding that there's going to be stuff to go on here that no one's ever going to know about like, no one's going to know about your family business. Now, I grew up in a large family, a family of seven. My mom used to always tell me, we can talk about the family business here, but I don't want my family business in the street. For years, we have not told the truth. Buddy Ryan did me the biggest solid anyone could ever do me. He cut me and created an excuse so people wouldn't know what I was actually dealing with. And this is what we've done for players for years, coaches, organizations. We don't tell the public the truth. And I believe it's helped lead to being the most popular sport that we have in the United States. I don't believe it would be as popular if we knew all the things that went on. So for them and Mike Mayock, and man, God bless Mike Mayock. I'm glad he put his foot down. I'm glad they gave him the power to put his foot down because he deserves a chance. Just like every guy in that locker room who's dependent on A.B. to play at a certain level, it's their career. And to him, he don't even care. He don't care about the other wide receivers. He don't care about the, about the offensive linemen. He doesn't care about Mike Mayock's career. But they have sure enough put the gauntlet down, and this is just the beginning of an ultimate 
divorce that's going to happen. I don't believe he'll make it through two years there in, um, with, with the Raiders or be able to make it to Las Vegas. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, they allowed this in, in Oakland, traded for it. Not, not, it wasn't, it didn't they show up as a free agent. Him. Completely enabled him, which is why he got, he yes. got away with it there mm -hmm. and felt empowered to be able just assume that he could get away with it here. He was that player there and it worked. Hey, I'll pull the same thing here. And oh. I think this was a slap in the face. What I think, I think helped the Raiders was him posting this online so everybody can kind of now have this same warning that he got. But the fit, look, fifty-four thousand dollars to him is a rounding error. It, it's, it's such a small percentage of what he makes. It, it's more of, of a, a shot fired across the bow of, okay, enough is enough, and now we're going to move into this area, and and fifty-four can quickly become a lot more. And, and there's got to be a decision of, are we are we going to find a, a space that we both can operate in, or is it going to just be? this clashing throughout the course of the season. And one other thing that I find interesting is the dates on this. So the, he was fined 40 grand for missing preseason training camp on August 18th. That was the date Mayock famously said, you're either all in or you're all out. Basically, that was the day Mayock made it clear to everyone he'd had enough right. of this. The walkthrough he skipped was August 22nd. That's four days after. And to me, that's relevant because even after Mike Mayock said to everyone publicly, and I'm sure A.B., yes. we've had enough of this, he skips a walkthrough, I think that's on a game day, August 22nd. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is another signal that Antonio is not getting the message and does not have much of an interest in changing his behavior. I had a high school, I mean, coach before high school and middle school taught me. He said, Chris, I'm going to teach you not to quit. And the reason why is because once you quit, it's easy to quit. And once you not show up, it's easy. No 100%. show, no call in Pittsburgh leads to these things. Oh, walk through, that's not important. Oh, practice, that's not important. Still continuing to get away with it in Pittsburgh. Didn't get away with it here, Jenna. All right, we got to take a break. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First. Or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.